so let's call upon the stage uh, one of the speaker that is he's a founder of the open devx and his name is a pawan and he's going to talk about the building successful api developer programs hey pawan welcome to the api days thank you shreya I yeah we well. are really ex we are really excited to understand how organization can build a successful developer programs <laughs> Thank you. So, as usual, um, it's, it's it's great to be on an API Days talk again. So, uh, Mehdi, John, Prashant, and everyone else, um, kudos to the organizers for making this such a successful event. So, the meta theme of uh, this talk is uh, largely going to be around uh, building successful API developer programs and how developer experience is at the very heart of achieving that. Uh, so through this talk, we'll cover through a few uh, CARTCHAs. Uh, some of them are prescriptive, some of them are more descriptive, uh, and largely experiential wisdom on uh, what predicts success uh, towards building successful API developer programs and uh, what uh, API program owners can do to ensure that a developer experience that is commensurate with uh, your ecosystem ambitions is uh, actually being delivered. So um, let me briefly start with uh, with my introduction. Um, my name is Pawan Keshav Murthy. I'm here in uh, Bangalore. Uh, I've been a founder, developer, manager. We've even done some sales. But my primary persona is as a developer. Uh, by the day, I operate uh, two separate uh, companies. Uh, platform Atri is largely around platform architecture and strategy consulting. Uh, and I also help build Open DevX, which is a DevX and API ecosystem focused solution. Uh, we also do a bunch of other things, but through my uh, prior history, I've also been a contributor to half a dozen different open source projects, amongst other things. So basically, I've been a developer and uh, I've worn both hats. Uh, both on the API program side, as well as uh, being a consumer of APIs as well. Um, there are uh, other things uh, about myself, which I shall not dwell on. I'm happy to connect on LinkedIn for those who are interested. So um, jumping into the heart of this talk, um, I want to talk uh, specifically when we talk about uh, DevX, right, uh, the heart of it is basically a product around which you're actually delivering an experience. And in this case, the audience for such a product, which happens to be APIs in the context of uh, this event and everything we are talking about out here, happens to be an API, right? So basically, the product is the API and the experience is really for the uh, developers for the primary audience, right? And um, put together, right, um, developer experience is basically the sum of all interactions, right, uh, that a developer goes through in the process of uh, really consuming the APIs that you have to offer. Now, there are a few nuances uh, because developers are a slightly uh, different class of customers than the traditional B2B, B2C categories one, so one is uh, typically used to. And uh, there are a few challenges and opportunities uh, with respect to that. But uh, in general, right, uh, you need to kind of move beyond uh, APIs being integration mechanisms and endpoints and think about APIs as being products. The rest of this talk is really focused on uh, how you can actually make a product experience around APIs uh, really resonate with your uh, developer audience and um, literally provide your company or your business capabilities as a service. So it's uh, in the full spirit of doing that. So um, if we start talking about that, um, it is a complex adaptive problem and uh, Delivering a successful API program or DevX as a consequence is at the intersection of uh, people, processes, and tooling. So uh, the most important aspect is, is of course, about people, which you know we should uh, belabor the point a little bit on. 
primarily because that involves you know multiple stakeholders it involves product managers uh, who are not product managers in the conventional sense uh, because api product managers will have to be good technocrats who can put themselves in the developer shoes while being ceo of the api product and figuring out you know how the api makes sense in the larger scheme of things and sort of the business perspective around it so on and so forth so api product managers very very important but uh, there are all there's also develop relationship management there are also marketers who are helping uh, basically amplify the ecosystem uh, from a tooling perspective there is of course your developer exchange developer portal there's uh, api management which is the formal practice of securing and managing the life cycle of your apis and uh, there are, there are also process underpinnings to this which revolves everything around api governance including the governance of apps that are using your apis the ownership of the services underlying those apis itself and the uh, larger operating model around uh, around just your api ecosystem so delivering successful api programs is a team sport and um, much more than centralized teams uh, it needs a culture of transformation around uh, not just some but all of these uh, different constituents of the ecosystem that we just talked about so uh, while that is the case uh, typically uh, if you want to evangelize apis and the starting point of devx is uh, typically in the marketing domain that is marketing typically developer focused marketing let's put it that way uh, owns the kpis around uh, driving api product adoption and usage that's kind of where uh, all of this begins right um, it's important for all constituents of the ecosystem api product managers to devrel to marketing to embrace the fact that uh, uh, the consumption of apis is finally an experience that is just like any other there is a definitely an e-commerce metaphor to it um, developers begin uh, by basically developing awareness around your apis that's kind of where like footfall happens into your uh, developer portal and you know at this stage the goal is to basically drive awareness right create that feeling of missing out what's really in it uh, for you as a developer and what can you do what can you build so on and so forth and that progresses towards more a stage of uh, engagement where a potential developer is uh, actually enthused towards building something out and at that point the journey is largely more focused on uh, on documentation on how tos and guides and details and being able to actually try out api calls so on and so forth At this point there may also be a lot of opportunity uh, especially to bootstrap new developers who are coming in into your ecosystem just about stepping in by taking them through hackathons you know the opportunities around how you create developer engagement are fairly vast and then that progresses towards the narrow end of the funnel which is around signing these developers up and onboarding them formally into your ecosystem and you know at that point you'd like to know more about the developer right um that becomes a touch point for personalization so many different things uh and finally we actually progress towards uh, a conversion which is you know the end goal is to really get developers to build something right that kind of culminates in uh, somebody creating an app getting a pair of you know api keys or credentials and figuring out how to then handhold them towards getting their app into production and uh, figuring out how to enrich um you know the developer app uh, towards a an ecosystem metaphor which is like partnerships incubation funding so on and so forth so um the point is the the developer journey this developer journey does vary as a result as a function of you know the the 
class of developer, whether it's internal, external, or third party. But in general, uh, it's important to have a developer journey because that becomes the very foundation of providing an experience. Um, invariably, uh, how do you measure uh, such success, whether be it around your experience or just around the program itself? Um, you know, as you would recall, what gets measured finally gets managed, right? And therefore, it's uh, possible to reduce um, DevX and successful program creation to a bunch of different metrics. This is a non-exhaustive list of possibilities, everything from dev marketing metrics, which is really focused on getting footfall into your developer portal, getting more developers to sign up towards more uh, product management and product fit metrics, which is are developers actually creating apps? How long does it take to actually get to your first app? What's the actual engagement signal, right? Based on how many apps you've created. And uh, finally, kind of drilling that down to your API product level. How many apps do you have per API product, which is uh, not only horizontal, but also vertically focused on single APIs. And therefore, that drives uh, accountability as well as uh, the need for evolution from an API product management standpoint. Uh, there are, of course, also growth metrics, which is around like how is my API adoption or product adoption growing over time, which can also be measured strictly in terms of the number of apps that you have, but also API call volumes. And finally, the hard metrics around uh, revenue per API product, revenue per app, so on and so forth. So um, in other words, uh, DevX as well as API program success is uh, measurable from various vantage points around marketing to product fit to product and ecosystem growth. So um, we, we come to some prescriptive uh, advice at this point. Uh, in order to achieve all of these things, um, what would be some important pro tips, right? Uh, for, you know, the prospective API developer program owner. The first thing I'd begin with is, uh, is to stress on how investing in a good developer portal is very, very important. Basically, a developer portal that not only looks good, but also reflects your brand values, creates a strong trust signal. It's something that developers can trust. Secondly, um, there has to be an incentive uh, to sign up. A developer that is uh, not known or understood by you will eventually disengage. Uh, those relationships are extremely uh, transactional. Thirdly, uh, developers are here uh, with the objective of building stuff, right? So in order to build stuff, the uh, app onboarding workflow uh, should be smooth. Uh, we talk about governance being a 10 letter word, but you know, if you have you know, 20 different steps that need to be taken, uh, that's a sure short way to kill developer interest. Uh, I talk about this primarily because I've seen this in the context of uh, several different open, open banking and BFSI focused API programs, for example, where uh, we understand security is important, but at the same time, ensuring that the developer experience is not hampered is uh, also very important. Nextly, we talked about uh, developers not being a monolith. There are segments out there, um, internal, external partners, all have different expectations and they're all finally ecosystem constituents. Uh, they may even need uh, completely disparate API programs as well, tailored for very specific goals. So therefore, how you segment API programs is something uh, that's going to be probably unique to your organization and the goals that you want to deliver. Importantly, uh, there is a KYC customer 360 metaphor. You need to know your developer very well, right? Understand what they've already built, what are they trying to build and what support do they need? Because they will be the real poster boys or poster childs, poster children of uh, any success stories that you want to create around your APIs. So, uh, Building a solid dev marketing foundation is extremely crucial. 
So what begins as a marketing problem, uh, finally, you know, you, you may solve uh, some marketing problems uh, with sales. You may solve some product problems with marketing, but ultimately the substance has to exist, right? And uh, it's important that API product managers own the uh, entire value proposition of uh, why these APIs, or specifically when we look at it as a product, why this API product. So product managers uh, must own the API product value proposition and make it self-evident, right? Um, the most important questions are like, you know, what should you know about what about uh, about this API product offering? What can you build with it, right? And what have people already built? Uh, what are some measurable success criteria of those who have actually accomplished something successful on top of your APIs? Also important to talk about how is it priced? Uh, does it cost you much or does it cost you anything at all? How can you get started? So. Uh, the product value proposition uh, needs to be actionable and uh, that is uh, going to reflect in the experience that you offer. So, you know, there's the marketing funnel, but marketing funnel finally actually ends by offering the product value proposition in a no BS kind of way, where you answer the most uh, important primitive interrogatives around what your API product is actually about. But let's unpack the API product experience a little further, right? So uh, we talked about the canvas. The canvas is much more product management, internal facing. From a developer standpoint, it's about you know the, the a crisp statement of the value proposition. What is it? What can you do with it? And uh, what really helps is to tell the story with some data who's using it, what's the maturity of the APIs, and uh, these will all add to the trust signals of uh, why you should build upon something. It's also important uh, to bootstrap such an ecosystem by demonstrating a few key important use cases. You know, what can be built, what has already been built. Um, it's also important to mention here that uh, we see a lot of API programs that tend to have self-branded apps where you're kind of uh, cannibalizing the ecosystem yourself. So therefore, it's important to for product managers to step back and demonstrate key use cases. What can you build with it that we don't compete with you around? And uh, that becomes a key catalyst for developers to really seize on the opportunity. There's also transparency of rate limits and pricing. What, what is it going to cost you? How much can you use? Those are all extremely important details that need to be made transparent right at the get-go. Finally, um, all of this research around the product value proposition at this stage of the funnel really culminates in taking the next best action, which is uh, you know, really to sign up, read more docs, get help, or get a call from uh, your uh, developer, advocacy, team, DevRel, you know, the possibilities are open. But the API product experience is really, you know, it's a, it's a customer experience journey that you know, you'll have to crack in such that you attract the right developers and get them basically to build the sorts of things that will add value to both the parties. So um, we come to the last section. Uh, we've talked about the uh, technique. The, we've talked about the product management aspects. It's kind of the uh, the um, the business fundamentals of APIs. But uh, finally, APIs uh, are uh, really a technical story, right? Uh, good API design goes a very very long way in actually providing a good developer experience, and we can't uh, talk about that enough. But let's summarize a little bit, right? Um, the most important aspect is uh, allowing people to get a trial run of your APS. So interactive API docs and consoles, the ability to try out a full range of API calls, ideally in an integrated manner. Often what happens even with uh, the try it out interactive consoles is that they break the experience because you know, you've got to go make an OAuth, dance somewhere, go fetch a token, and then finally create in, so on and so forth. So, but 
a an integrated uh, security experience is uh, extremely useful in catching developer attention and basically channelizing them towards what is actually achievable with the APIs and the ability to basically play around interactively. So um, think about think about um, what interactive consoles provide today, but but better, right? Um, secondly, um, you know we've got uh, we've got uh, so many different languages and stacks today. So the real KPI there is around improving the time to first line of code, right? So there's no point in writing boilerplate if that could be avoided. So a choice of SDKs and ready to copy paste get stuff running um, with uh, you know your stack of preference is uh, is very crucial um, think about what uh, think about the limits that you can take that to ready to deploy containerized kits ready to deploy functions uh, where the developer is having to do less in order to get running is better uh, nextly um, we've seen um, many APIs that uh, involve uh, bespoke, homegrown security mechanisms, your own flavor of OAuth, so on and so forth. And uh, while they may be uh, required uh, with a sort of regulatory flavor to it, but um, where it can be avoided, uh, having standard mechanisms is going to make the uh, security comprehensible and easily implementable by the developer. Finally, uh, we should also talk about uh, emerging API standards and protocols. It's not just a restful world. I mean, I think we're already past the uh, era of SOAP APIs, but uh, beyond REST, you also have you know, polyglot API standards emerging. And there's a, there are a lot of heterogeneous standards. So just think about GraphQL. GraphQL is great from you know, a more uh, control in the hands of the client standpoint. There are also more event-driven APIs, such as async API, cloud events. And there's, of course, a big rebound of uh, RPC-style APIs, which is everything from gRPC, double, thrift, amongst other things. So providing uh, these different heterogeneous standards of APIs, uh, which are arguably more performant, better developer experience, is definitely going to be um, you know, a, an aspect of developer experience that will be for the better. Finally, um, as we draw to a close, we, need, we don't need to talk about day to DevX. You know, at this point, we'll assume you know you have your you know your uh, developers who've been through the day zero stuff. They've created an app, they built something, but uh, the real DevX actually comes in on day two on how do you retain those developers and how do you orient them towards growth of not just what they're trying to build, but also of your ecosystem business. And uh, there are several gotchas there. First thing is, of, of course, you know, change is always frowned upon. Have a good deprecation policy as APIs evolve, change. Um, ensure just that you know, we, we see so many examples of people uh, burning a hole through their pockets on, um, you know, with cloud billing. Uh, similarly, if your APIs are actually built and monetized, it's very, very important to have quota and budgeting alerts, uh, not just around your API rate limits, but also around you know, what it is costing them potentially if your APIs are being metered and built. Uh, it's important uh, to have audit and observability logs on the server side just as a means for developers to basically come look at what's, uh, what's actually happening, right? what's failing and what's the, the forensics around it. Um, important to inform about disruptions to your services. Higher high API error rates. Maybe it's uh, it's, the, it's 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 you. It's not the developer, and it's important for them to know. And finally, when all else fails, providing a help desk support channel, uh, ideally with uh, human support being involved. You know, when push comes to shove, you know, you basically go get support. So, um, we draw to a close, right? So API programs uh, can become not just, you know, another integration program within your uh, within your enterprise, but can actually 
unlock ecosystem possibilities and that's what you want to emphasize mostly about and when done well right um, ecosystems actually generate solid revenue there's a lot of evidence for it out in the wild and uh, if you must achieve all of this where does your journey begin the journey is really going to be centered around productizing and providing the right customer experience and in this case that is really about providing the right developer experience uh, that's very much it um thank you very much and i'm thank happy you. to take any questions if there are uh thank you thank you very much uh, pawan so uh, yeah we